you're mentioning, um, how you see your function, in so many ways, I'm paraphrasing what you said, but essentially you see yourself, one of your functions as being an ambassador between the jinn realm and the human realm, insofar, if I'm understanding you correctly, insofar as there's a lot of, um, there are a lot of min- misconceptions that people have vis-a-vis the jinn realms and the jinns. And there are a lot of abuses that are done towards them and against them. And, and you see, which I think it really was an eye opener when you put it to me like this. And I really loved what you said, that you see, see yourself as an ambassador for, for them as a human being to say, look, we can't keep doing this shit to them. Like, because mm-hmm. they, I mean, we, we talk about, as we should, right, it, 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 about taking care of the natural world and, 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 and you know, being stewards of the natural world. But mm-hmm. at the same time, which is absolutely our, our responsibility, a huge responsibility, right? Not a small thing by any means. If, if, if we are in, again, this is within this Islamic cosmological framework, right? If we are created as God's vice chairs, right? Have, as Khalifas of God, each and every one of us, right? It's not each just and every one of it's us. not just Absolutely. a caliph at the head of the Islamic state. It's each and every one of us is a caliph in his or her own right. We are God's representative on earth. We're a bridge between heaven and earth. If that's the case, and we are supposedly in potential, right? We have to realize that we're not there yet, all of us. I mean, some of us yes. are not there, <laughs> but we're potentially right. Um, um, what's the word? We're God's caliphs, and we are we are we are bridges between heavens. And therefore, you know the, the sort of the um, the mevlavis in their twirling, right? The, the symbolism is, you know, it's literally the grace coming from from the heavens, and and we're spreading that grace into the earth, right? So also, if we're God's caliphs, we have responsibility to the jinn world, right? Again, reminding ourselves of that famous, very important verse that God. Right, God did not create mankind nor did except that we worship Him. If mm-hmm. we are supposedly the crown of creation, we have a responsibility to be respectful and honourable and conscientious of that mm-hmm. realm, and not just in some fearful. Oh my God! Did, so could you? That was a huge eye opener for me. Huge when you said that. And when you said vice regions, you literally took the words out of my mouth. Um, and those are God's words. They're not ours, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a very important concept that people don't understand. Most people who don't believe in God, their argument is, well, if God exists, why is there so much war in the world? Why is there famine? Why is there so much suffering and death and this? And why are there all these crimes committing? Well, yes, because God put that world into your trust. We are the ones creating famines. We are the ones going to war. We are the ones killing each other. So you have to accept, it's not just the fact that God raised you, right? Is that he gave you a responsibility over this world. So what are you doing with it? He gave you this infinite potential. We have to understand that we are different than angels and jinns in the fact that our essence is divine. Right? Our essence, the soul that we have is divine. But he put it into this clay mold which everyone frowns upon, angels and gems. See, people, they think that angels, they're so nice and they're so wonderful and they, you know, they're they're kind of like our toys to play with. No, that's not true. Angels actually see us us in a very negative light. And you can see it even in the dialogue where where God says, they're like, oh God, because everyone was expecting themselves to be the Khalifas of the earth. Because this is one of the most beautiful planets, you know, it has, um, it, it's just beautiful, all the resources that are available. It's really like the, the best place to be. It's the best area code within the cosmos, right? So they're expecting where he says, I'm going to make a vice region. The angels are like, well, he's going to make us. And of course, you know, Iblis, he's going to be, well, he's going to make me. I've, I've worshipped him all over the place. And then he says, no, it's this guy, this new guy here. You know, and then well, the, the angels, they're like, hey, we're, we're, we're glorifying you. We're praising you day and night. And you're going to make these people who are, you know, who are going to shed blood and corrupt the earth. Because the gens were there before and that's what they were doing. 
right? We have to remember that the gens were on earth before us. So we came into their turf. This is something very important. So this is not just the fact that, oh, okay, we'll have rice regions, we're, we're the crown of creation, but we have the crown of responsibility as well. We have to show not just jinns, but angels, that we are worthy of this place that God has placed us in. And that's, that's what the devil said. He says, you know what? I'll show you. Just give me time. Extend my life, please. Because he prayed for it, right? Let's remember, after he, after he disbelieved and was cast to, 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 uh, to hell, he still prayed for it. So please, guys, remember that the devil still prays to God. <laughs> he says, just give me time and I'll show you they're not worth it. He says, okay, you can go and you can. He says, okay, I will come from front and center and back and I will tempt them and I will show you. This is the bet. This is the wager that they have going together. Now, of course, look at what we're doing between human beings. Look at what we're you know, the suffering we're imposing on each other between races, between colors, between ethnicities. Now imagine going one step further between jinns and human beings, which are not even the same race of beings, right? And this fear, this xenophobia goes both ways. It's not just us who are afraid of the jinns, but they are as much worried from us and by us as we are by them. With the right knowledge, it's very easy for a human being to kill a jinn. With the right knowledge, it's very easy for a human being to imprison him, to burn him or her, or do whatever they want. You know, with the right knowledge, and when God puts that power in your hands, but that, and that's what most magicians do, threaten, burn, imprison. Many jinns who are in charge of evil magic. I, I just, I just thought of this, you know, Monsters Inc. You know, I, you know, it, the monsters are scared of the little child. Right? They are scared of the little child. And how much truth is there? Because the child goes into the other dimension, yeah. and they have this very, very. They have their own fears. They have this stuff, the Hollywood stuff. I mean, there, there's a huge reality to it. These people are not pulling stuff out of their hats. They're, they have this huge organization and they have objectives and, you know, the, the, this stuff is, is work. It is actual work for them. They have bosses, they have to report and all of this. They have this organization. So when we are looking at the spirits and the spirits are looking at us, there is this mutual fear, mutual caution, mutual concern. And theirs is justified. 